And here we are. Okay. I did not announce this one early, so let's see how many people we actually have show up this time. Hello, Josiah and Anne-Marie and Brandon. Hey, everybody. All right, gang's all here. Very cool. Okay, as usual, I am going to grab the link for this and put it in the various social media places. Hello, Andrew and Matt and Tim and Byron. How are you? I gotta admit, I don't hate Oscar. Uh, and Michael Johnson from England. Hello, England. Dova and uh, Kevin from Ireland. We are international. We are international tonight. Um, and here I didn't bring a topic. Hi, Matt. I usually try to have a topic for these, uh, but I, I didn't have one. So I guess we're just going to talk, and uh, we'll talk about G.I. Joe, because that's what everybody's here for. Dave, how are you doing? There we go. And Tony is in the United States. Brian and Matt, another Matt. Hi, how's everybody going? Uh, how's everybody doing? Um, I have to make a run for O-rings. You can't have too many O-rings. That's a terrible thing to run out of. Bradley, how you doing? So, uh, hey, it's nice to see everybody. I didn't put up an announcement uh, for this. It's just the, the regular time. Um, uh, Pensive Ruin, ODC That's Me has great uh, G.I. Joe videos. I agree. I've been a little bit behind on uh, checking out everybody's stuff, but he usually has really good stuff. So uh, if you want to see a good G.I. Joe channel, check out ODC That's Me. Uh, he's got some good G.I. Joe stuff. Uh, hi, Mark. Rob Dog, hello. And uh, hey, Rob. I had no string. The thing didn't come with string. So I'm just going to have to go get some string. Uh, how am I tonight? Um, I'm mixed. Um, it's been a, a weird week already, and it, it's just, it's only Tuesday. So, um, yeah, we're, it's, uh, it's, it, this, these are strange times. There, there doesn't seem to be any day that is just normal. Uh, thank you, Tony, for having the notifications up. I appreciate that. Uh, all right, Isaac has to watch naked. So everybody, nobody look at Isaac, avert your eyes. Second Monday, yeah, let's call it that. Yeah, so uh, I, I told you guys I would have something um, uh, for you in lieu of a review, and so that was the assembly of the razor blade, uh, which I, I, you know, I enjoyed putting it together, but um, yeah, it was it was supposed to include string, and that it did not include. Uh, is Larry Hama doing all the new G.I. Joe comics? I think, uh, if I remember correctly, Larry's series is the 
one series that's still ongoing. I don't think any of the other series are. I could be mistaken about that, but that's my understanding. <clears throat> cool, Jose. Um, so yeah, uh, so I'm glad you guys showed up. Um, I don't have a topic, uh, so we'll just think of something to talk about related to G.I. Joe. Um, yeah, the, the series that uh, Larry is doing now um, continues from the Marvel series, uh, or it's in the Marvel continuity. Um, and I've, I've read a little bit of it. I really want to read, read a lot more of it. <clears throat> I've been encouraged to do that, uh, and I hope to find time to do that. The Nam comic. That's an interesting... I really liked it. Uh, I thought uh, Michael Golden's artwork in that comic worked a lot better than it did for G.I. Joe. Um, because um, uh, in The Nam, uh, you were dealing with like very realistic situations. And his kind of sort of cartoony style you know, took a little bit of the edge off of that. Um, whereas in G.I. Joe, it's, you know, you got kind of cartoony char characters anyway, and um, so his the translation of his style to G.I. Joe in yearbook number two, uh, I was kind of so-so about it, but I really like his work in The Numb. And I think it's just a good comic. Um, I recently watched uh, the Ken Burns uh, documentary, documentary about Vietnam, and I thought that was really interesting. So that's got me thinking about the subject, so interesting that you would bring it up. Um, used to customize. Um, oh, I mean, I, I'm all for customizing, uh, and it's cool to see... Um, uh, what other people do. It's not something that I do. I just don't really have time to, to do it well and do it properly. Hi, Jenna. Um, I don't have time to um, do it properly and learn, you know, good techniques. So it's not something that I do. But there's some amazing customizations out there, and I think that's awesome. Uh, there's some, some incredible skill in, uh, that some of these customizers have. Uh, the benzene uh, arc is brutal, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, and that was kind of later in the series, too. So, um, so yeah. Um, repro, uh, oh, Repro, uh, only if it's custom and not an exact copy of the original. Yeah, that's kind of the, um, the issue that I have with some of the Repros. Um, and I understand wanting to get some things that mm -hmm. are, you know, expensive um, and not wanting to pay that much for it. Uh, but uh, for those who are looking for the genu genuine article, having a lot of these, you know, really high quality repros out there can make it very complicated. Um, but some of the, um, you know, the casting that's done and some of the... Um, it's not really repro stuff, but they're more like custom figures, um, uh, like uh, the Red Laser and the Black Major figures are just incredible. Um, I mean, who could who couldn't like that? Uh, you can get a, a figure that is almost the same quality as uh, you know a factory made figure, uh, but um, you can get things that never existed before, and that's pretty cool. Uh, Anne likes to create her own characters. Uh, yeah, that's cool. That's what we used to do. We used to enjoy that a lot. Um, and I'm sorry if I missed anybody's uh, comment. Uh, let's see. Just got the Tubi app because it has two seasons of Sunbow in the Deke series, Sigma-6 Renegades, Resolute, Cobra for free. Cool. Um, I, I have a Roku, and there's a Hasbro channel, and um, it has most of that, too. Uh, plus, I have a lot of it on DVD now, so um, I can go back and watch that when I need to. And I'm sorry, I think I might be missing some folks' uh, comments, and I apologize for that. Um, why do you think there's never a chaplain figure? I don't know. Uh, that may be going a little far into the support roles uh, than you want to do with an action figure. I mean, some kids didn't necessarily even get, like, the medics. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm not sure how well a chaplain figure would have sold. Um, 
And a team like G.I. Joe, when they were attached to Fort Wadsworth, probably would have um, used their chaplain, I would assume. <clears throat> Uh, October Guard should have been made in the 80s with vehicles. That would have been nice. We got them instead in the... We got we got um, the October Guard uh, after the end of the Cold War. So, a little late. Uh, why I didn't have a toy line in the original lineup? I don't know for certain, but there might have been some question about whether or not um, Hasbro would have to pay Larry for those characters. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, the Deke series, it, I mean, you can tell that it's it's cheaper uh, than the Sunbow series, but I will say this, for the Deke series, uh, a lot of the vehicle models that they used uh, were pretty good. Uh, when they showed vehicles, a lot of them were really close to toy accurate, and I'll give them that. Um, so, you know, <laughs> good job, Deke. Uh, but it was that series was lacking in a lot of other ways, like um, the acting and the writing, uh, just it was. I mean, you could tell that the, it was it was a lower budget series. Uh, any archetypes that we never got that you would like to see? I'll have to think about that. I mean, somebody mentioned the October Guard. We should have got the October Guard. That would have been great. Um, and uh, I think I would have liked a. Um, uh, a Quinn figure, um, an actual vintage Quinn figure would have been nice. Hi, Gaz. Uh, Billy, yeah. Yeah, that would have been something uh, to get a Billy figure back then. Of course... Uh, when I was a kid, we always imagined that there was a Scar Scarface figure. Of course, there wasn't, but, the, you know, it was just one of those myths that, uh, kind of an urban legend that there was, there really was a, a um, Scarface figure. <laughs> yeah, Joe's played football against Cobra with tanks. With tanks. Because that makes sense. Um... Uh, a JAG unit for G.I. Joe? Yeah, um, um, I mean, I think, I mean, they, they would have probably team members with, you know, secondary specialties that would fill a lot of those support roles, but I doubt that they would issue, like, a, a, a specific figure uh, for those specific roles. Even though, you know, uh, J the Joes would need to avail themselves of the JAG service you know, as well, they would need somebody to do that. But uh, as far as how that would be structured, I'm not really sure. Um, like I said, when they were stationed at Fort Wadsworth, you know, they probably used the personnel and the infrastructure there. Um, but when they were moved out to the desert, you know, they were kind of just on their own. So I don't know. We're getting very deep with these questions. You liked uh, Cesspool in the Deke series. Uh, Cesspool's a really interesting character. I look forward to looking at that one. If G.I. Joe had something like NCIS, well, it would have a popular TV series. Um, yeah, the support... Who said that? Um, Jose. Yeah, the su uh, support between Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines... That relationship with G.I. Joe, you're right, that was never really very clear. Um, uh, as time went on, I sort of started to think of them as like their own branch of service, um, but that would feed, like the other branches would feed into it. Um, so um, that's kind of always kind of how I imagined it. Well, of course, it wouldn't necessarily work that way because they would have to have um, their own infrastructure and, uh, you know, they uh, have probably somebody, you know, some kind of representation on the Joint Chiefs of Staff. So, 
I don't know, you, but you make a good point. It's not really clear how uh, G.I. Joe relates to the other branches of service. Um, see, we're talking about G.I. Joe already. I didn't even come with a topic, but you guys all bring the topics, and it's great. Um, any talks of a six-inch six black... I can't talk tonight. Six-inch black series... Uh, for G.I. Joe uh, by Hasbro. Um, not that I'm aware of. Uh, I know some folks would really get into this, the um, get into a six inch series, but then other collectors say no way. So, yeah, Shipwreck's uniform, I think it's the Shipwreck's uniform is, is sort of like the a stereotypical sailor's uniform, maybe not necessarily 100% accurate. Yeah, see, some folks say no six inch. So, uh, GI Joe, real Ghostbusters crossover. Well, you know, it's too bad they weren't in the same scale, because then you could have gotten the toys and made your own crossover. Uh, do you have a favorite PSA? Mine was in, when Deep Six emerges. Um, uh, let me think. Favorite C PSA. Um, the one about treading water, I can't remember. I can't remember which character was in that, but it was the kid, and he taught the kid how to tread water when he's in the ocean or something like that. Um, I don't know why that would be my favorite. Favorite is just one that for, has always stuck in my head since the first time I saw it. <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah, thanks everyone for coming. Um, it's been kind of a, a rough week for me, so it's nice to have this time to talk with you guys. Um, oh, thank you, Kyle. I'm glad you like it. Um, art, that is something that I need to work on because I need to do several sketches for people, for patrons. Um, something that uh, I'm still working on. Uh, I'm glad, but I'm glad you like it. Um, I'm I'm real rusty <laughs> as far as art goes. Um, I don't practice uh, like I used to. Um, I used to, you know, I used to really love doing art. Uh, Zartan uh, is late again. Way to go, dude. Um, so, you know, I do the best I can with my art, but I know that there are people out there to do a lot better. Hey, Max Rebo's Ghost Music. Hey, how are you doing? Nice to see you again. Uh, and thank you again for all those 90s Joes. I can't say it enough. And Michael Adams. And there's ODC That's Me. See, uh, folks were talking about that dude earlier. Uh, he has some good G.I. Joe videos, so make sure you check those out. Um, like I said, I didn't announce this video, so I don't know if we'll get as many people in, but that's okay. Yeah, Shipwreck as the comic relief in the cartoon series. Yeah, uh, in the comic book, um, he was a bit different, but he wasn't used as much in the comic book, so, yeah. Favorite pilot. Favorite pilot. Um, I, I guess I still have to go back to Ace, even though it's not my favorite pilot character, or that, that spacesuit kind of thing he's wearing. Hi, Ryan. Hello, Ryan. Um, is kind of funky, but I just, um, the fact that he came with the Sky Striker, uh, just gave that figure a little extra mystique. If I were to go with, like, the better, like, pilot action figure, the one that, uh, is sculpted better and designed better, yeah, it's probably sl Slipstream. Although, uh, wait, which was it, like, Ace version 2? Was it version 2, the one that came with, like, the helmet and, like, had the really cool-looking flight suit? I don't have that one yet, but uh, that one looks pretty good, and I look forward to getting that at some point. You like Wild Bill? Yeah, me too. Wild Bill's fun. He's cool. Uh, did USS Montana's... Uh, 
Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Jose, you ask a question. I don't know. Um, oh, the custom G.I. Joe uh, vehicle picks uh, you sent me, I, I will have to double check those. I apologize. Um, I don't, uh, they are not fresh in my memory, so I'm sorry. Um, Wild Weasel, the best Cobra. Wild Weasel, Weasel is an excellent pilot figure, but the Strato Viper is a pretty sweet figure. Um, I think I might like the Strato Viper figure a little better than Wild Weasel. But, oh no, somebody's Zartan pads just snapped off. Oh no, those things, uh, the real, that really sucks. Those are not fun to replace. I'm sorry. So, uh, I wish we had... Hey, there's Mezidup one. Um, I wish we had, like, more movie news to talk about. Um, I'm looking forward to that getting ramped up next year. Uh, getting closer to the 2020 release. So, you know, that's what I really like to talk about. I want to find out more about, about the movie. Um, uh, the Star Viper. Yeah. Uh, the Star Viper did have his moment to shine, didn't he? Um, but, uh, yeah, the, uh, when we get the movie, you know, this, all this stuff is going to be, you know, in the news. It's going to be in front of the, the public. Uh, we're going to get some attention. Um, Max Rebo's Ghost Music uh, asks, uh, would I like to have seen figures of the rest of Snake Eyes, Lurp Team, Wade, Colin, Sticky, Saperstein? Um, yeah, I mean, I love, like, those Vietnam-era figures are awesome, and I think it's really cool that um, at some point they, they did give us a, a three-pack with Stalker, Snake Eyes, and Storm Shadow. Would, that's sweet. Um, uh, seeing, since those characters didn't appear very much in the comic book, they probably Hasbro probably wouldn't uh, release figures of those characters. But they would be perfect for customizers. A customizer could have a great time, you know, uh, putting that team together and making perfect spot-on mm -hmm. customs of those guys. That would be awesome. Uh, thoughts on the sideshow statues? Really mm -hmm. nice, very uh, just beautiful looking uh, outside of my price range, but they look great. Uh, there's no denying that. I mean, uh, it's just, I, I love just looking at all the details that they managed to put in those things. Uh, they are high end collectibles, but kind of for a good reason. They're really nice, really nice. Uh, yeah, the Marine and Soldier at the end of 94. Let's, yeah. Oh, Dennis. Oh, good. I'm glad you got it. Yay, Dennis got his stuff. Hey, I'm glad. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, daughter's friends, just they just don't get action figures. Uh, they think they're cool, but just not must-haves. Uh, yeah, that seems to be the general attitude about action figures among kids these days. Um, let's see. Uh, Steven asks, what's my favorite sub-team? And I'm glad you're enjoying the videos. Thank you. Um, like, of any sub-team, including Cobra, or just the Joe's sub-team? That's, uh, if it were, if the Dreadnoughts count as a sub-team, then that's probably my favorite. Um, if you're just talking about, like, Joe sub-teams, um, I really like Night Force. I mean, what's not to like about Night Force? Uh, they took some figures that were already pretty awesome, and, uh, and for a lot of them, made them more awesome. What's my favorite movie? Um, oh yeah, I got Casablanca over there, and um, Public Enemy over there. So, Humphrey Bogart, and, um, James Cagney. I like both of those. I used to watch a lot of classic movies. Um, it used to be 
something I spent a lot of time on before I was doing this, um, and I enjoyed that. What's my favorite, though? Uh, that's that's harder. I, Casablanca is really good. Um, um, I was always partial to the day the Earth stood still. Um, and I know it's a lowbrow science fiction movie, but I always really enjoyed watching that. I just thought it was really well done. Uh, the Night Boomer. Well, you know, if you have if you're on a high fiber fiber diet, sometimes you have a Night Boomer. Um, am I a James Bond fan? I like James Bond. Um, I have not watched James Bond recently. Um, I. I for the most part, uh, enjoyed the Sean Connery era. Um, I haven't really watched a lot of the more recent ones, though. Uh, World War of the Worlds, nineteen fifty-three. I like that one too. That was good. Um, I did. Um, I, I did enjoy, you know, old science fiction movies. I think the only genre that I really didn't... Okay, no, two genres that I never really got into, uh, either classic or modern. Hey, Green Yeti is late, but here... Um, two genres I never really got into were horror and westerns. Uh, they just... I just can't get into them. Um, and, you know... Uh, Halloween is coming up. Oh, sorry. Halloween is coming up uh, in a little over a month. Uh, well, no. Halloween's not coming up in a little over a month. Um, October is. And nowadays, like, everybody does, you know, horror stuff for the entire month of October. Uh, it's now a big theme that has to cover the entire month. Um, and every October, I just get reminded that, you know, horror is just not my thing. Audie Murphy? Yeah, the Audie Murphy story. That's a really cool, like, real story, too. About to give up on modern film remakes. Um, yeah, that's... It, most of them aren't very good. Uh, I guess the one virtue about them is, you know, you still have the classics, so... You know, they can take a shot at it, you know, maybe, hey, maybe they can do something good with it, but, um, but yeah, most of the modern remakes aren't that great. October Guard Month. Uh, that would be fun. Uh, let's see. What, what, what could I do special for October Guard Month? I do, I do have a friend who is Russian. Maybe I can get him in on it. You know, see if he can, uh, so come on and, and talk about, you know, I, th I think he might be able to talk about Ru Russia in the 80s. He grew up in, uh, I think, in Moscow. Uh, I don't know. Maybe not for a whole month, but maybe next time I uh, review October Guard, um, I will discuss that with my Russian friend and see if he will be the token, Rus the token uh, risky for that review. Um, only two figures in the vintage line. Yeah, that would make it a little hard to do a theme month. Um, th but they released some later, didn't they? Yeah, they did. They did release some later. I, uh, yeah, ironic October Guard should be in November. See that? I like the way you think. See? <laughs> the Night Creepers. I liked the Night Creepers. They're actually a pretty good figure. Uh, Night Creeper Leader is um, is not one of my favorites. A Crimson Guard movie? That could be interesting. <laughs> yeah, the October Guard were huge in the comics. And it makes sense. I mean, this stuff was written in the Cold War. And, I mean, how can you have a military-themed comic book um, in the Cold War and not have Russians and not have Soviets? You got to. Um, and we did. Oh, uh, greetings from Guatemala. Uh, hey, well, greeting, greetings to Guatemala from the United States. 
Uh, and uh, thank you for watching the videos. Hey, SEO Toy Reviews is here too. Um, and thank you for thinking about me. It's, it's, uh, um, I have been um, surviving, uh, just surviving. Um, it's, uh, it's been a difficult month, um, and it seems to like it's going to continue to be difficult. This has been a very weird week. Seems like they're all weird weeks. Um, but thank you for, uh, thank you for your thoughts. Um, I appreciate that. And SEO Toy Review, excellent channel, uh, great stuff. Uh, Scoop misled to join Cobra. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the Scoop story in the Deke series again. You know, giving the Deke series some credit. They did something interesting with Scoop. Uh, probably more interesting than, excuse me, than the cartoon series did. Hello, North Carolina. Hello, North Carolina from the United States. Um, the, the comic book series didn't do quite as much interesting with the character, but it, the character did feature in uh, an issue that I really liked. How old am I? International Joe Month, Big Ben, Skymate. Um, you know, they, they did um, a mail-away set of uh, called International Action Force at uh, some point in the 90s. It was just a bunch of recolors of earlier figures. I think there would be enough in there to do a whole theme month, do uh, each figure. Um, and I've seen those sets. I haven't nailed one down yet, but I've thought about it. Um, did I film the Recondo video near home, or did I go to an actual jungle? Uh, it just so happens that I live half a mile away from the Amazon. Um, no, seriously, there's there's just a wooded area um, in the neighborhood. Uh, it's it's just like right right in the middle of a whole bunch of houses and. Uh, uh, park. Uh, so I just tried to get a camera angle where you couldn't see cars and houses in the background. We do have a lot of trees in Oklahoma. We have a surplus. If you need any, we'll send you some. Well, thank you everyone for showing up. Uh, older than 12 and younger than 60. That is correct. Uh, thank you, Byron. Uh, backstory for Tomax and Zaymont. Uh, yeah, um, they seem to have a potentially interesting backstory. Hello, Woodman. Uh, do the Sears exclusive air and ground support vehicles. Love your side. Thank you, Brian. Uh, I will eventually do them. Um, before, you know, my job turned... Um, the way that it did. Um, I was aiming at uh, being a bit more aggressive on purchasing uh, some of the rare items, including some of those um, uh, Sears exclusive. And I've seen a few of them uh, for sale here and there. Um, for the time being, I'm, gonna, I'm being a little bit frugal, but I will eventually get to those. I look forward to doing those. Um, I think they are interesting, even though they may not necessarily be my favorite toys, but I think there'll be uh, a lot to say about them. So, yeah, the Sears exclusives, actually all the Sears exclusives I'm looking forward to doing. I was fortunate to get the, the um, Sears exclusive cat tank, um, and, uh, you know, I've always got an eye out for uh, the, mobile, the um, Missile Command Center from 1982. Um, uh, thank you, Mezzed Up One. Um, I tell you, you know, I, I would give about anything right now if I could just do this and join you guys uh, every couple days or so. And, you know, I love this. Um, even when I'm stressed out, I uh, don't necessarily feel like doing a live stream. Uh, sitting here and talking with you guys always makes me feel better. Uh, and coming to you guys each week and talking about G.I. Joe is a wonderful thing. Um, I just, I, I, what I need, I'll tell you what I need. I need a 
uh, rich benefactor. So if any of you out there are independently wealthy um, and uh, would like to be a patron of the arts, uh, you know, absolutely uh, send me large checks uh, and that will solve all my problems. Uh, but in the meantime, <laughs> I, will, I will enjoy um, uh, joining you as often as I can. Yeah, I need help hunting G.I. Joe toys. Uh, glad to help. And thank you. Um, you. You guys have sent so many supportive messages that I, I, I just, I can't thank you enough. Um, and I, I keep hoping to be able to slow down a little bit um, and make sure to reply to everyone. And I'm sorry I haven't been able to reply to everyone yet, but your messages have been very encouraging. Uh, so thank you. Um, so, oh, we're, we're doing ages. Everybody's telling their age now, right? All right, so my age is 43. Um, and I got into G.I. Joe uh, at the beginning of the Real American Hero line. <clears throat> at the very beginning, in 1982 with the straight arm figures. So now... <laughs> Oh, I think I think Michael Adams is the oldest at 45. And I believe Green Yeti is the youngest at 13. No, no, we got somebody who is 12. Somebody who is 12. You win nothing. There are no prizes. So, um, Gung Ho was your first figure. Um, Steven, I, I love the Gung Ho figure. Um, the... I, that light blue was never my favorite thing. Uh, but I always like imagined Gung Ho's uniform being a bit more realistic than it was on the figure. Um, like like a, an olive drab vest and some like woodland camo uh, uh, trousers. Uh, I just That's just how I imagined Gung Ho. But at the time, of course, I was perfectly happy with the figure. Uh, even with the blue, because I just thought it was cool that he was a Marine. Oh, Zartan will be uh, 41 in September, se September 7th. Happy birthday early. Yeah, Fragminian, that was always really cool. I mean... Sometimes I wish I could go back to those days when you just walk into um, any retail store that had a, a toy department and just go through the, the G.I. Joe racks. Now a lot of stores don't even have toy departments. Uh, Matt says what I'm sending you might be... Okay, all right. Sorry, it had to reconnect. It had to reconnect. I wouldn't retire, I would just do this. Um, I love this. I love this. I love doing this channel. This is my favorite thing to do in the world. Uh, and the fact that, you know, my job situation has made it more difficult to keep up with this channel uh, is uh, been uh, a part of uh, the, um, the problem that I've had. Um, Toys R Us gone, yeah. Except it's still in Canada, I believe. Don't you miss the 80s? Sometimes I miss the 80s, yeah. There's a lot about the 80s that I do miss. Um, a lot of the, the aesthetic stuff about the 80s. Um, but then, you know, in the 80s, I um, also remember being, like, worried legitimately for real worried about nuclear war with the Soviet Union. Um, that was not a cool thing about the 80s. Uh, so there are some things about the 80s that I don't miss, and, you know, time marches on and society progresses, and those are good things. Uh, but uh, there are some also some really cool things about the 80s that, that I do miss. I miss the decade... I guess the 80s was the last full decade 
when the world wasn't quite digital yet. The world was still analog. Uh, and I kind of miss that. Um, it's, it, since everything's digital now, um, well, it's, the world's probably better, honestly, because uh, we have the internet and technology like this phone here that I'm uh, doing this on, but it, better or not, there are still things I miss about um, the world before it was digital. Self-isolated, yeah. Yeah, there, there are things, I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not one of those people that's saying, hey, you know, back in my day, the world was better. I'm not saying that. I'm not. Uh, and there, there are things there about the world that are much better now than it was in the 80s. Um, all I'm saying is there are still some things from back in, then that, that I miss. Uh, yeah. Uh, and G.I. Joe, that's one of them. Oh, yeah, Tony, Red Dawn, scary as a kid. Yeah, I, Red Dawn, I watched that, and it was like, wow. I mean, we, you would feel as a, a kid, like, this could happen, right? What am I going to do if this happens? Miss the old pubs from the 80s, all modernized now. Well, Michael, um... Yeah, we, uh, I think when Susan and I were in uh, the UK, we went to, we went to a lot of pubs. Uh, we went to some old ones and we went to some more modern ones. Uh, and I think we found something to like about each of them. Uh, but we were tourists, so um, we were just glad to be there. Um, oh, here's a little piece of personal trivia. Um, uh, in Cobra Convergence 2, uh, the guy that played the Toy Master. Uh, his name is Landon, uh, and he is a very good friend of mine uh, from the UK. And I guess it was 2014. Uh, Susan and I uh, actually went over there uh, to the UK, and um, we had a chance to visit him and spend a lot of time with him. Um, uh, yes, actually, we did go to the old trip to Jerusalem in Nottingham. We got out of London for uh, one excursion out of London, and that was to Nottingham. Because I have another friend named Jacob that he used to live in Nottingham at the time. He lives in London now. Uh, but he took us around Nottingham. Uh, we got to go there because um, Susan uh, got tickets to see her favorite comedian, Russell Howard, who was doing uh, a show in Nottingham. Uh, so... Uh, we got uh, uh, we got to get out of London for a little while, meet up my fr with my friend um, uh, Jacob in Nottingham. We went there and we went to like Nottingham Castle, which is like a museum now. Who did that? Messed up one HCC seven eight eight forever. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for that super chat. You, sir, are the salt of the earth. Yeah, we, did, we, we got to spend a day in Nottingham. Uh, we didn't get to do all the touristy stuff, but we got to do a bit. And it was really nice to get out of London for a little while, although we enjoyed London too. Um, but it was nice to see the countryside a little bit and see something else. Um, uh, thanks, French. If you like British comedy, uh, try Limmy. I will try that. Uh, Susan is more the British comedy fan than I am, although I like it. Um, she uh, sometimes gets obsessed with it. <laughs> so um, Susan is very much, uh, you know, the um, international entertainment uh, sort of person. Um, when we don't get um, all the British shows here, but when she finds one that she likes, she tends to binge watch it. Uh, Dennis, uh, in the 90s, scared the Russian mafia getting atomic weapons. That would be terrifying. Oh, yeah, Doctor Who, yeah, we, um, I haven't kept up with Doctor Who in the last, um, year or so, but we used to watch it all the time. 
Uh, Red Dwarf was, uh, and I guess still is, one of her favorite um, series. We got a bunch of Red Dwarf on DVD. Uh, more crossovers with Form BX257, Joe Fan, or Timmer. Yeah, I don't have any planned right now, but uh, I will absolutely do some. Um, and uh, all they have to do is ask, and I will do anything they want me to do. Uh, seems scarier after the USSR broke up. Yeah, I remember that. There was a period there, like right after the end of the Cold War, there was a bit of uncertainty. Oh, hey, there's Susan right now. Uh, she, and Susan is asking for a British comedy recommendation. Uh, okay, my wife is watching this from the other room. That's a little creepy. I feel uh, spied on. She's spying on me. we got about 15 minutes left. Um, I'm trying to keep these to about uh, an hour. And I've been pretty successful about that so far. What have I not done? You know what I haven't done? I haven't uh, said uh, anything about uh, the other great um, G.I. Joe YouTubers out there that everybody should be watching. Um, for, um, for BX 257 uh, you know, when he does a video um, and I watch it, I'm like, man, I can't think of anything else to say. Um, he does such a great job. I love everything that he does. Um, thank you, Kevin. Um, uh, okay, Green Yeti wants a shirt that says um, uh, Team Galobulus. All right. Um, so, um, anyway, yeah, FormBX257. <laughs> when he does a review uh, of something before I review it, then I'm like, oh no, because he's going to cover everything and I won't be able to think of anything to add. Um, but I, I, use, I try anyway, you know, I try to, to uh, bring, you know, my own perspective to the table. Um, hey, Matt is 25 miles from Nottingham. Uh, and Timmer from Half the Battle, um, you know, I love Timmer uh, as a person. He is so cool to just talk to. Uh, oh, Kevin. Hey, thank you, Kevin, for the super chat. Uh, very much appreciated. Um, oh, and ODC has to leave, but I'll say uh, see you later, ODC. And that's another great channel to watch. Make sure you check out his stuff, too. Um, JoeFan82 for modern stuff. Um, and uh, uh, G.I. Joeberg for their videos and podcasts. G.I. Joeberg has started uh, posting their travel videos for... Um, for uh, their Jocon trip, and that's really cool. They posted part one, uh, and it was really neat. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of that. Ratface, hello. Um, yeah, okay, so Susan, you're getting lots of suggestions, so write those down. I've always wondered, um, if you are uh, not in the United States, Monty Python, if you're not in the United States, that was, somebody watching this back is going to be very confused, because I started a sentence and then just said Monty Python for seemingly no reason. It's in the chat. It's in the chat. Um, okay. If you're outside of the United States and you um, collected and played with G.I. Joe, um, is the uh, whatever version of G.I. Joe, be it Action Force or what have you, is that still your canon? Or do you look to the American uh, releases and the American version? Uh, or do you stick with what you uh, know and what you're familiar with? Um, uh, I'd be curious to, to uh, know what how, uh, if, I guess, if the American um, version of G.I. Joe relates to uh, what you play with or, or what you think of when you think of G.I. Joe or Action Force. Uh, oh, uh, Ratface is in Canada. Hello, Canada from the United States. 
And hello, Mercy Lou. If you could, would you bring G.I. Joe back? Yes, yes. Um, I'd try to bring it back in some way that um, will make it popular again. Something that will appeal to modern audiences. Something that will make it cool again. That's what G.I. Joe's missing. G.I. Joe needs the cool factor. Oh, hey, uh, Rivers from Monterey, Mexico. Well, uh, hello, Monterey, Mexico from the United States. This is cool. This is cool. Uh, dub with British voices. Um, I need to, I don't think I've uh, been able to... I tried to find some um, Action Force... Um, cartoons for the Action Force review, and I don't think I found any full episodes, so I'll still need to hunt those down. And uh, 117 Legion, the only kid in your school that likes G.I. Joe. Well, I want to fix that. I want, I want it to be cool again. Would have loved to have Baron Ironblood as in, in our version of G.I. Joe. Yeah, um, uh, I would, you know, if, if those two, uh, two storylines uh, could be, like the American and the Action Force storyline could be combined in some way, that would be really awesome. And having Baron Ironblood as another faction, uh, another enemy for G.I. Joe, would be super cool. Um, those figures and their backstory are just amazing. Um, when you read the Action Force comics, though, uh, it's pretty clear that, you know, they do have totally separate storylines, and it would not be very easy to merge them. But if they could be, that would be really cool. Uh, custom G.I. Joe making segments like your, um, your own Joe or make your own Cobra, enemy customs, there would be a Globulus custom figure making challenge on your channel. Uh, I hadn't thought of it, Glenn, uh, but since you mentioned it, I uh, think about it. Um, I don't usually get into customs, but I know you, a lot of you guys are into customs, uh, so maybe that's something we need to do. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Templar. Glad you made it. Yeah, um, the Baron Ironblood, that definitely harkens back to more of like a World War II era. And George Lopez is in Guatemala. So I guess you guys only had the American version. And Legion, you have a USS flag? That is awesome. I have one as well, and it's a pretty cool thing. See, there you go, Green Yeti. See, Green Yeti, you need to have a contest for a custom Golobulus. Uh, thank you, Woodman. Favorite episode uh, of the cartoon series? I'm going to totally comp out because it's my favorite episode is probably the one that everybody says. Um, it's uh, the two-parter Worlds Without End. I know that that's, uh, that's not reaching very deep for a favorite episode, but the truth is that it, th those two were my favorite episodes. Um... Because for once, for once in the cartoon series, war actually had consequences. Springfield, that was a good episode too. That was like a, you know, that was a tense episode. The, oh yeah, the, the Viper, the one with um, Barbecue. Yeah, that was, you know, I, I know a lot of people may not necessarily like that ending. It's pretty cheesy, but I always, I always got a chuckle out of it. It's, it's just absurd enough for me to enjoy. Uh, the Mass Device miniseries. Again, if I go back and watch, like, uh, a few cartoon episodes just for fun, it's usually the, um, the first miniseries. That's usually what I go back to, um, the mass device. Just because I remember seeing it when it first came out, um, and uh, it's, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, 
I, it was those characters that I had in action figure form just like come to life and you know there they were with voices and you know it was uh, it was a special thing at the time um, uh, I liked I, I didn't like a lot of the cartoon series you know that came after but at the time it was very exciting to have G.I. Joe on TV um, and you know I, I didn't I never thought of it as like an advertisement for the toys and I know that was the purpose but I never bought a toy because of the cartoon really or even the comic book I got the toys because I thought they looked cool and we were trying to get all of them anyway um, and then when I watched the cartoon or read the comic book it was like um, like sort of like more like vindication that the thing that I got and play with is actually really cool and has this neat role in in the comic book or the cartoon. Uh, Jeremy, yes, me too. I was more of a fan of the comic book as well. Uh, Arise, Serpentor, Arise. Uh, I, I, uh, that miniseries is pretty good as well. Uh, Arise, Serpentor, Arise um, actually handled that, um, that storyline pretty well. Uh, if you remember, it, the introduction of Serpentor in the comic book series was rather abrupt. Um, and in the uh, cartoon series, they made a bigger deal of it and played it out a little bit more, made it a little bit more interesting. So, uh, yeah, I thought it was uh, not bad. Um, of course, I will always be on Team Coco, but um, Serpentor, if you're going to do, if you have to do Serpentor, if you just have no choice, you have to have your Serpentor, that wasn't a bad way to do it. Of course, you could not have your Serpentor and just keep your Cobra Commander. That would be my preference. G.I. Joe versus the Core. Lost episode. Hey, that would be fun. Um, looks like we're closing in on an hour, uh, so well, I'll be on here for a few more minutes, guys. Um, Matt said he has a, uh, all Action Force as a kid. Uh, man, th um, there were some Action Force toys that I just blow my mind and uh, some really nice people like Michael Johnson who was in here earlier uh, have sent me some uh, Action Force stuff and it's awesome I mean if I were a kid in the UK at that time I absolutely would have been into this stuff even if I didn't know anything about you know the American G.I. Joe stuff uh, they made some really neat toys uh, and even some of the reissues of American toys for Action Force where you know some of the colors were changed and whatnot, some of those color changes I even really like. Uh, so, um, oh, Michael's here but sleepy. Uh, oh, I guess it is pretty late where you are. Old Snake, uh, thank you, uh, Michael. By the way, uh, uh, everything that you've done is very much appreciated. Um, so yeah, I guess it looks like it's getting close to wrap up, uh, wrapping up in a couple minutes. So. Um, I will start to wind down. Um, Snake Bit Goat, uh, nice to see you. Uh, thank you for stopping in. Um, and thank you, everyone. Um, make sure you keep watching your other uh, G.I. Joe content creators, whether that be a podcast or YouTube or a blog, Instagram. Uh, there are some great things being created for G.I. Joe right now by fans. Um, and if you look for it, there is more G.I. Joe content than you could, uh, th than you could ever possibly watch. I mean, it, there's so much and good, high quality stuff. Um, Dennis is th uh, 3 a.m. in Denmark. Mark, man, if I were you, I would be asleep. Uh, but thank you. Thank you for showing up. It's very, uh, much appreciated. And thank you for your support. Um. And I guess I'll wrap up by, by thanking everyone for their support. Um, it's still been a really difficult time, and I'm just so ready for this rocky period to be over. I so want to get back to normal, more than I can tell you. Um, but uh, you guys have helped a lot. Um, and if I could just, for a living, sit here and do this with you, I would do it in a heartbeat. Uh, because this is this is now my, my favorite thing. So 
Um, so thank you. Thank you all. Um, and uh, with that, um, I will say see you guys soon um, and good night.